this swim was technically one of the most difficult swims I've ever done because I had to go as slowly as possible in order that I didn't hyperventilate and actually drown and yet as quickly as possible to ensure that I wasn't in the cold water long enough that I'd freeze to death. And so I had to get this very, very fine balance going during the swim. I think I got it just right, but I had to convert from crawl to breaststroke to swim slowly enough that I could actually get my breath during the, during the swim. I was inspired to do this swim because of the melting of these glaciers. If you look behind us, you'll see the Kumbu Glacier extending all the way up to Mount Everest. And throughout the Himalayas and the Hindu Kush region, you've got these glaciers and they're beginning to retreat. And when they're retreating, there's, it becomes a situation where you don't have a constant water supply downstream. And imagine a situation where you're in Bangladesh or you're in Pakistan or you're in China and you're not getting a constant water supply. It's a recipe for instability in this region. What, what is your time? 22.51. I did 22 minutes in Antarctica. The swim, in fact, was the easy part. It sounds bizarre to say it, you know, swimming in two degree water at 5,300 meters is an easy thing. But now I go around the world, I meet lots of heads of state, I give lots of speeches and try to, to really bring alive what is happening here in the Himalayas right into their offices and into their boardrooms. Because what happens here is going to impact every single person around the world. We need to come to terms with the fact that we live now in a global environment and that what happens here or in the Arctic will impact every single person. I congratulate you on behalf of uh, the people here, the people of Nepal. So it's a swim for peace. It's, it's a plea to the politicians around the world and to the business leaders to do something about climate change. Everyone's putting it off and putting it off. You know, there wasn't a, a proper deal in Copenhagen last year. I already hear environmental ministers talking about what's going to be happening in Mexico and, you know, we won't get a deal there and perhaps you can try to get a deal in South Africa in two years' time. It's ridiculous. We need a deal right now to protect these areas.